What is the strangest thing that has ever happened to you? I was looking some dock work and I'm pretty sure I walked into a major drug deal. So I just pretended I was looking something, whistling, took like a ledger off a table and went ah. Here we go. Been looking for you, and walked away like it was nothing. This was in the 80s so I'm pretty sure it's fine to tell this. A few years ago I traveled to Mexico City for the holidays. I would fly there and spend a week in the city before taking a bus to another city, also in Mexico, to visit relatives for Christmas. Before the trip, a friend of mine asked me if I could take a present for a friend of hers that lived in Mexico City. It was a t-shirt. I agreed to take it since it wasn't heavy and took practically no space in my luggage. My friend gave me the number of her friend, who would be receiving the t-shirt, so we could coordinate and meet up one day. It turns out this girl lived in the north of the city while I was staying in the south. For those who don't know, the city is absolutely humongous, and it would take close to two hours each way to get to her part of the city by public transport. Since neither of us wanted to waste an afternoon on this, we agreed to notify the other if we were going to be in a more central location in the following days. A week passed, and we didn't seem to coincide. I would be taking a bus to another city for Christmas, but I wasn't too worried. I was going to return to Mexico City after Christmas since my flight back home left from there, so there was still a chance to deliver this t-shirt. In the morning I was due to take my bus, I arrived at the northern bus station, which is a fairly big building, and the place was crowded as hell. There had been some kind of problem, and all departures were delayed. People have been waiting for hours. To illustrate how crowded it was, imagine you were in front of a Metallica concert, but everybody, me included, was carrying a suitcase. It was total and absolute chaos. I managed to navigate through the crowd to my gate. There, a lady with a megaphone was trying to direct and organize the crowd into waiting in line, to no avail. My bus was delayed as well, so there was nothing to do but wait. After a few minutes, someone calls my name. I turn, and I see a young woman who looked unfamiliar. I raked my brain for a couple of seconds trying to place her and concluded that I most definitely hadn't seen this woman before in my life. I asked her if we knew each other. She told me, I am, name. You have something for me, and I was confused for a moment until it clicked that it was the name of the girl I was going to deliver the t-shirt to. It was her. She explained she recognized me from photos and the FB profile of our mutual friend. I was dumbstruck. It would have been difficult for someone who knew me to spot me in the middle of the crowd, let alone someone who had never really seen me IRL. I told her that in fact, I had her present with me, in my suitcase. I started politely asking the strangers around me to make space so I could lay my suitcase flat on the ground and open it, it was that crowded. While I was doing so, the girl asked where I was traveling to. I told her, to which she replied, me too. She then asked me what company I was traveling with, and it turns out we were both traveling with the same company. I told her I was on the 815 bus, and she told me, me too. We were on the exact same bus. We agreed I'd give her the present once we arrived at our destination, where it would surely be less chaotic. Once there, I gave her the t-shirt and wished a Merry Christmas, and we both went on our separate ways. Given the sheer size of the city, the sheer number of people, and the chaos at the bus station, and the fact we didn't actually know each other, I can say that the chances we'd be on the same bus and that she'd recognize me from photos on someone else's FB profile were nothing short of astronomical. When I was a child I fell asleep watching Nickelodeon. It was the show with the slime. Anyway, I was woken up because the host was grabbing the camera and shaking it saying wake up, insert my name. Wake up, insert my name. I sat there in shock that the host just came to the camera and looked dead at it and told me to wake up. Turns out the camera lady and I had the exact same name but still, freaked me tf out. Just to add, my name isn't uncommon but it's definitely not common like the Sarah's or Jessica's of my time. I was at a concert in London, and once it finished, I had about an hour to catch my train home, which would be about two hours or so outside of the city. But I met a couple of folks during the show, agreed to have a quick drink with them before heading home, one led to another led to another, and I hopelessly missed my train. No great disaster, I've got friends in London who've always been happy to let me crash, one of them even works nights so I can just text him and pick up a key to his place. So I hop on the underground and head in his direction, and I straight up just fall asleep and end up all the way at the end of the line about 45 minutes later. Not ideal. And I see that I get a reply from my friend, he's away for the weekend. Things are now looking not good. So I head out to the platform expecting to have to travel back towards somewhere central and start looking for some other options pretty damn quickly. There's one other person on the platform, they start heading towards me, and I'm feeling f nervous. Until they get closer, and I realize I know this girl. We went to school together. She moved away when we were 17, and the last time I heard from her, she was living just outside of Stockholm. 
Turns out, she still is. She's just in London for the weekend and is meeting a very generous friend at this station for a lift, who apparently has no problem doing a little night driving. Even more of a coincidence, they're going to my hometown. Tagged along, had a lovely time catching up, and wildly against the odds, I got home safely, more or less around the time when I was hoping to in the first place. I was sitting at traffic lights and a policeman knocked on my window and asked me to pull over. Turned out my car and the car in front both had the same registration number. We later established that a mistake at the dealership meant that two cars had gone out the door on the same day with the same plates. Months later we happened to be sitting at the same traffic lights and somehow a policeman spotted it. I can't even fathom the chances of it happening. This reminds me of a similar but very different story. My N is a personalized number plate L12 CDX. She wanted Liz Cox, but someone already has it, so she's rounded the two and D off as much as is legal to look like C and D. She lives about two hours from us, and we meet up only two-thirds times a year. My mom lives about 1.5 hours further on the other side of her, have to go past our town to get to my mom's so sometimes we drop in on the way. This particular day we were off to visit mom and we'd popped in. There was traffic issues so we'd been diverted down back roads. All of a sudden the car in front of us has the number plate Liz Cox. To randomly bump into it out of all the cars in England was bizarre enough, but less than an hour after we'd seen her was just totally bizarre. This was way back, I was going to school in Buffalo, I'm from Michigan. It was 1am, and as I'm walking past the phone to go to bed, the phone rings. I answer and an operator says, collect call from Hiram Herndon, my father, although I am not using real names, but not the most common name out there. I was startled, and half asleep, really needed to be in bed. I said, this is Haley Herndon. Hiram is calling me. My mind is spinning. If my father is calling me at 1am, this can't be good. On the other hand, why would my father be calling me collect? I was a broke student, and he was an exec with a car company. There was a moment of silence. I repeated my name. Another short pause, and the call disconnected. I didn't call my father right then. If it was a real emergency, he would have called back right away, and I didn't want to wake my parents in the middle of the night for a prank. Called the next day, and my parents had no idea what was going on. For me, the freaky part was that whoever called me had my somewhat unusual last name as well as my father's name. This was also the same year, I started receiving my subscription to UFO magazine, although I had never subscribed to it, and no one could explain why I was receiving it, the magazine was good for a few laughs every month. When I was about 7 or 8 I went to the park with my older sister and her friend. We were enjoying ourselves and it was almost time to go home for the night. We heard someone say, hey. When we turned to look at where this person was we saw a completely naked man on the other side of the chain link fence. We were freaked right out. He put his, ah. Uh, genitalia through the fence and told us to come to him. We booked it out of there as fast as we could. When we got home we locked all the windows and doors. We peeked out the window and saw the same guy with on a bicycle, with clothing on now, riding down our street looking for us. I remember when I was living about 10 minutes outside of town and one night I drove into town to get some food around 11 p.m. and the drive through wasn't too busy so it took me maybe 5 minutes or so to get my food and then I drove straight home. I don't know exactly what time I got home, but when I noticed the time it was almost 3 a.m. I didn't stop anywhere else on the way home after I got my food and I wasn't drunk or high. Got a CT scan to see if something was going on and everything came back normal. I have no idea how a 30 minutes or so drive took almost 4 hours. It still boggles my mind to this day. Copied and pasted from my response to another thread. My eldest son was deaf as a small child due to an inner ear malformation, until he was nearly 3. He talked a little, but was very hard to understand. Mostly we used sign. During the time of this story his father, my now ex-husband, was in basic. So it was just me and my son. At night I would hear him talking in his room, adjoining mine, but couldn't understand what he was saying. He laughed occasionally though so it's all good. For Christmas that your mom made me and my sister's memory books. She copied photographs of her and my dad's family for us. Until this point, I had had no pictures of my grandparents. So a few days past Christmas I'm showing my sister and while the memory book. I have my son on my lap and book on my knees. I turned to a page that had group photos of my great grandparents and grandparents, one side paternal the other maternal. My son's face lights up and he points at my mom's father, Robert, in a group photo and says clear as anything, that's Bob. My sill and I both about s. I said, how do you know him? And my son giggles and says, night night. The thing is, even if I had had a photo of my grandfather, I never called him Bob. He was just grandpa. The other one was grandpa George. 
So there's literally no way my son could have known his name and pointed him out in a group photo. He's 22 and still a weird kid. I was like 10 years old and my mom was going through a really tough time. She came home one day during this period and was sitting down staring off into space. I was across the room from her and I looked over at her, and I swear that somehow I was able to see her human experience, I was like sucked into her consciousness for a moment. I could see her thoughts like I was having them and feel her despair. She was looking back at all the people in her life, I could see them in my mind space even though I didn't know them, and I could hear the narrative in her head. She was wondering how she had messed up so bad and searching her memory for where she went wrong in life, and I could feel her hopelessness in a way that I cannot describe. It was truly like her guard got let down and I could see into her soul. I wish I would have comforted her in that moment, but I was so weirded out that I didn't know what to do. It was like I had inadvertently witnessed a very private and vulnerable moment that wasn't meant for me. As a kid, walk down the street when an old woman pushing a wheelchair comes my way. The wheelchair contains what looks like a person covered completely with a thick black plastic sheet. We make eye contact, she smiles and walks past me. I didn't turn around, just walked home. 20 plus years later, I still wonder what was going on. Or if it was even real. It isn't that strange in hindsight, but at the time it was absolutely mind-shattering. I had a very bad time the first time I did mushrooms. The trip was mostly spent crying in my room, but as I was coming down, I went out to the living room because I heard my roommates get home. I was just about to order a pizza on my phone when I looked at my dog and thought to myself, I wonder if she'd like to go for a walk. And in that moment it just hit me that I was a part of the world and I could interact with the world and that my actions could have a direct effect on the things around me like if I put the leash on the dog and took her for a walk she'd be on a walk which she loves and she wouldn't have been able to do that without me. Or I could order a pizza and a pizza would appear at my location and it would all be because of me. I guess somewhere during the trip I kind of forgot what it meant to exist and suddenly becoming aware of it like that was kind of a mind F. Maybe not as interesting as your story but reminded me of something that happened to me once. I worked in a one-hour photo center in college. We were probably one of the only places in town that could process the old mounted film slides. One morning a guy brought in a box of these slides to put on a CD. There were pictures from a family vacation to New Mexico from probably the 60s or 70s. One of the pictures was of the family in front of a pretty distinct sign that said welcome to New Mexico. A few hours later a totally unrelated customer brought in a roll of film. The pictures on the roll were from this customer's family vacation to New Mexico. It also included a family photo in front of the exact same sign. It always blew my mind that two families brought in pictures from a vacation they took decades apart including one in the exact same spot and they both decided to come into the same store and have them printed by the same person within hours of each other. I shared that with the customers but neither were as blown away so maybe it really was only the mildest of coincidences. My dad and I flew back to QLD from Vic after attending his Nan's funeral. She was a kind and beautiful soul and I miss her very much to this day. Not long after arriving to his house, we were standing near his bedroom door inside the bedroom face to face having a play argument. I finished my sentence to him, then asked him, did you see that? He smiled and nodded, we both admitted to seeing a green sparkle in the corner of our eye in the same spot. It was like a tiny cloud of green sparkles that were sparkling and falling in slow mo and lasted like a second. I also immediately checked the room for sunshine or sunset cracks through the curtain, but there was nothing. I had a hard time getting to sleep that night. Towards the end of Desert Storm I was deep in a rock out in the middle of nowhere on a recce looking for scud missile launchers, never found any. We were so far out in the middle of some valley we didn't expect to meet up with any large Iraqi unit or even have contact, in fact we avoided it because of our mission. At one point we came over a wadi and on the other side was an Iraqi checkpoint, we were in two soft top unarmored hums and all we had for weapons were M16s, a saw and our pistols. We stopped as soon as we saw them and they were as surprised as us. I got out, gave a tentative wave and one of them waved back and we turned around and got the fuck out of there. They could have chopped us to bits but probably thought we had a large force in the area. This happened maybe a month ago. I posted it to our slash lucid dreaming but no one cared lol. So last night, this morning, I woke up at like 3.30 am but managed to fall asleep at about 4 colon 40 ish. I dreamed I was back in college, graduated like 10 years ago but it was not quite my school. I spent a whole week there. I went to class, interacted with other students and my teacher, lived off campus with my husband, although he didn't feel like my husband, you know? It's college so it felt like my boyfriend, kids not around, didn't cross my mind, etc. I had an assignment that I scribbled in my notebook. It was just a question, like a discussion assignment. I get to class and the teacher asks us to discuss. First she calls on the boy sitting a few desks down. He laughs and flips through his notebook like no, 
I did not prepare for this assignment at all lol and I'm flipping through my notebook because I think I did it. At least I remember discussing it with my husband, boyfriend, at our apartment, but I can't find it. Of course she calls on me next. Well, I know T is something for us. She tends to have good ideas and she starts blabbing on, but I really can't hear her because I'm too focused on trying to find it. I look up and like, yeah, I can't find it. Could you repeat the question, please? She comes up behind me and puts her arm over my shoulder like, come on, you always have something for us and starts looking through my notebook as I flip pages. I stop to say something and she notices my doodles on the pages, which I am very wont to do, and it's of a bed, too nicely done for my usual doodles, and tiny doodles of something, maybe seahorses, were ranged in dots and she says they're interesting and pretty good. Soon after, it's time to go. I'm walking across campus taking odd shortcuts behind buildings and through dorms when it starts to rain, hard. Suddenly it clicks, I bet I'm dreaming. I'll try to fly. So I take off running and do a little hop occasionally walking by another student and they're like a, uh, hi. Or what the hell are you doing, TLOL. I start again and finally take off. I feel just ever so slightly hesitant as I'm getting past the cloudy part in the sky when everything is starting to get blue again, then things start to get pixelated. I flail just a little and then get stuck, frozen in air. For a split second I'm like OS. So I tell myself to feel around and I can feel the covers on my body on bed. Then boom. I am in bed and my husband's next to me. I say hey babe, what you doing? And he's sitting up a little too straight and says thinking about you, I've been waiting all week to get a sense of you to want you. My husband says stuff like that but the wording is off. So I tell myself to feel for the covers again, without moving, and I finally wake up in reality. I go downstairs and my husband's making coffee. I look at the time and it's 5.45 a.m. I seemingly live the week in only about an hour. It was all so surreal I found myself checking to make sure I wasn't actually still dreaming. I told him all about it, but really wanted to share and get thoughts from you all. What about you? Tell us your story in comment section, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Right now!